Welcome, dear friends, to another episode of Through the Bible. It is a wonderful day to dive into Scripture and discover the eternal truths hidden inside the pages of the written Word of God. I invite you all to join me as we continue our expedition through the book of Matthew. In our previous study, we discussed about how Jesus chose, equipped, and commissioned the twelve to go to the nation Israel and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Today, the urgent task of the church is to go to our Samaria and the ends of the world, as well to preach the good news of God's love and salvation. The urgency of the kingdom of heaven today is the Lord's imminent return for His church anytime now. Jesus also taught them what to expect in their ministry with people, and they were also taught the principles that should govern their lives. As they go about teaching, healing, and delivering, the Lord warned them that opposition was imminent. As the Master was opposed, so shall they be. If they should ever perish in opposition, He encouraged them that it was only a matter of flesh and not their souls. And more so, it was not that God didn't care. The Lord's love and knowledge of His creation is so vast that not one sparrow or a hair on our heads fall to the ground unnoticed. So His guidance and presence will follow them wherever they minister. Nevertheless, the call for the devotion and ultimate sacrifice was so great that it could not be traded with anything else. It was the cross and the love of Christ against everything else. Today, dear friends, we shall continue on with Jesus and His earthly ministry. Without any further delay, let's get started. Today, it's our privilege to look into chapter 11. We were talking about a movement that was continuing into all these chapters. The Lord Jesus has enunciated the ethic. He has performed the miracles and He has sent His disciples out to present His claims. They have gone down the highways and byways until they have covered all the cities of Israel. Now, what is the reception? What is the reaction to his Messiah claim? Let me give you it in one word. Rejection. This chapter makes a turning point in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 28 and 30, we will see that he gives a new message. It is a definite departure from the message of repentance in view of the presence of the King. Matthew chapter 11 verse 1 after Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. Having sent out his disciples, he himself goes out. How important it was to get the word of God out to the people. And in our day it is equally important. Matthew chapter 11 verse 2 When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples. Back in Matthew chapter 4 verse 12, it is recorded that John the Baptist was put in prison. So he has been in prison for a while now. He has been kept informed about the movements of the Lord Jesus. John's disciples have been watching Jesus and reporting to John. John is expecting any day for the door of his prison to be opened because he believes that Jesus is coming immediately to the throne and to establish his kingdom. Matthew chapter 11 verse 3 to ask him, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? John's question is a logical one. He has every reason to believe that the king would have assumed power by this time. He is definitely puzzled that the Lord is moving so slowly towards the throne. Note the Lord's answer to John. Matthew 11 verses 4 to 6. Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. The answer of Jesus is remarkable and can be understood only in the light of the credentials which the Old Testament said the Messiah would have. This is a direct reference to Isaiah chapter 35 verses 4 and 6. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong. Do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, 
and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. Now, waters did not break out in the wilderness, nor were there streams in the desert when Jesus came. Why? Because he did not establish the kingdom when he came the first time, but he was the king, and he had the credentials of the Messiah. That is all he is saying. John would recognize the credentials. My friend, Jesus answered John's doubts by pointing to Jesus' act of healing the blind, the lame and deaf, curing the lepers, raising the dead, etc. With so much evidence, Jesus' identity was obvious. If you sometimes doubt your salvation, the forgiveness of your sin or God's work in your life, look at the evidence in the scripture and changes in your life. When you doubt, don't turn away from Christ, turn to Him. In the following verses, the Lord Jesus defends John in case anyone wanted to criticize him. Matthew chapter 11 verse 7 As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? By the way, John was not the reed shaken with the wind. He was a wind shaking the reeds. Jesus is here seen defending John the Baptist. He says that John the Baptist is not a fickle person because what has happened to him is only becoming true to what was entrusted to him. Thank God for John the Baptist, a wind shaking the reeds. Our Lord continues his commendation of John the Baptist. Matthew 11 verse 8 If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. We know that John the Baptist was rugged, a rugged individual. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes. I tell you, and more than a prophet. Matthew 11 verse 9 He was a prophet, but he was more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. The Lord declares clearly that John is the fulfillment of Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, which states, See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. John was that messenger. John was specially chosen to introduce the Messiah to Israel. Note also John chapter 1 verse 21 to 23. Jesus continued, I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew 11 verse 11 Sometimes we like to debate the question of who was greater, Abraham, Moses or David. Jesus declares that John is greater than anyone in the past. No one topped John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. When the Lord Jesus came, he began calling out a group of people who are even greater than John the Baptist. How can they be greater? Because they are in Christ and clothed with his righteousness. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. This is a difficult verse to interpret because the force mentioned can be either external or internal. The forces of evil from without seek to destroy, that is true, but also those who are committed wholeheartedly press into it, that is, they violently want to come in. I hope you get that. There is a note of need and desperation. We have already seen that one young man ran and fell down at Jesus' feet saying, Teacher, I would follow you wherever you go. See Matthew 8, 19. That is, he may have meant that entering God's kingdom takes courage, unwavering faith, determination and endurance because of growing opposition leveled against a Jesus and his followers. Jesus continued, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. He who has ears, let him hear. Matthew 11 verse 13 to 15 John the Baptist fulfilled the prediction of the messenger to come as recorded 
in Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. But the question arises, if Israel has accepted Christ at his first coming, would he have established the kingdom immediately? And would John the Baptist have been Elijah? The answer is yes. You say, but how can that be? I have an answer for you. I don't know. I only know that this is what Jesus said and he can do things which I cannot explain. In fact, he does a lot of things which I can't explain. I simply accept them. There are those who argue, well, if Christ intended to go to the cross and die, his offer of himself as king was not a sincere offer, but it was sincere. But they insist, if Israel had accepted Jesus as their king, well, the point is that they didn't. These are if questions we are asking. And the fact is that the Jews rejected the Lord. The next two verses illustrate a great truth. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not moan. Matthew 11 verse 16 and 17. This is a picture of a group of children out playing in the streets. One group says, let's play funeral. They play funeral for a while, soon tire of it and then say, let's play wedding. Soon they grow tired of playing wedding. Then go from one extreme to another. The generation Jesus was speaking to was like that. And our generation is also the same. Matthew chapter 11 verse 18. For John came neither eating or drinking and they say he has a demon. John was both austere and severe and they didn't feel comfortable with him. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. Matthew 11, 19. Jesus was friendly. What about him? Oh, he's a gluttonous. He's too friendly with sinners. They weren't pleased with John, nor were they pleased with Jesus. Let me tell you, there are a lot of people whom no one can please. And that was certainly true in our Lord's day. We have now come to a tremendous change. Remember that Jesus is king. He has enunciated the ethic. He has presented his credentials by performing miracles. He has preached the gospel that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He has presented himself, but his people have rejected him. Their rejection has caused him to make a decision and he rejects them. He is the king and the king always has the last word. Matthew chapter 11 verse 20 to 21. Then Jesus began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Chorazin and Bethsaida were cities in the north near Capernaum where the Lord had his headquarters. He had performed many miracles in this area. They rejected him. And now he pronounces a judgment upon them. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. Matthew chapter 11 verse 22. You see my friend, light creates responsibility. The Lord never had a ministry in Tyre or Sidon, nor did he have his headquarters there. But he spent a lot of time in the area of Chorazin and Bethsaida. And he holds them responsible for the light which he gave them. It is my understanding that there will be degrees of punishment as well as degrees of reward at the time of God's judgment. Even in our own day, there are many folk who have had a glorious opportunity to receive Christ, but they have turned their backs on Him. Now the Lord speaks of Capernaum, His headquarters. And you Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. Matthew 11 verse 23. My friend, what a privilege was theirs in having the headquarters of the Lord Jesus in their city. But they rejected him. The Lord Jesus is saying that if the wicked city of Sodom had witnessed the miracles that he had performed in Capernaum, they would have turned from their wickedness and would not have merited the judgment that came upon them. Matthew 11 verse 24. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. This is the harshest language of all. Remember, it fell from the lips of the gentle Jesus. He speaks here as the judge and king. This strong language ought to make us sit up and listen. Although Sodom and Gomorrah were terrible places, 
it will be more bearable for them in the day of judgment than for the cities that had heard the message of Jesus and rejected him. What a great warning the Lord gives. Matthew 11 verse 25 to 26. At that time Jesus said, I praise you Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes Father, for this was your good pleasure. The phrase Lord of heaven takes you back to Genesis 14, 19, where God is called by this name. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. Many wise people never learned this truth, but many babes understand it. Dr. Harry Ironside said many years ago, always put the cookies on the bottom shelf so the kiddos can get them. Always put the cookies on the bottom shelf so the kiddos can get them. If you preach so children understand what you're saying, you can almost be sure that older folk will understand. But sometimes the children get it and the adults miss it. Jesus mentioned two kinds of people in this prayer. The wise argue in their knowledge and the little children humbly open up to receive the truth of God's word. Are you wise in your own eyes or do you see the truth in childlike faith realizing that only God holds the answers? Matthew chapter 11 verse 27 All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14 verse 6. These verses bring us back to a definite break and change in the Lord's message. Up to this point, the Lord taught, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He had presented his credentials and had been rejected as the Messiah. These cities which had been mentioned turned their backs upon him. And so also had Jerusalem. The Lord now turns his back upon the nation Israel, no longer presenting to them the kingdom. He is on his way to the cross. And his invitation is to the individual. Now, listen to him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. This language is in contrast to what has preceded it in this chapter. It is like coming out of a blizzard into warmth of a spring day, like passing from a storm into a calm, like going from darkness into light. This is a new message from Jesus. He turns from the corporate nation to the individual. It is no longer the national announcement about a kingdom, but a personal invitation to find rest of salvation. I will give you rest is literally, I will rest you. When he speaks of being heavy laden, he's referring to being burdened with sin. The same figure is used by Isaiah and the psalmist. Ah, sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. Isaiah 1.4 My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. Psalm 38 verse 4 my friend, sin is too heavy for you to carry. The only place in the world to put that burden is the cross of Christ. He bore it for you and He invites you to come and bring your burden of sin to Him. He can forgive you because on the cross He bore the burden of your sin. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This refers to the salvation of the sinner through Jesus Christ. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. This refers to the practical sanctification of the believer. My friend, what is weighing you down today? Is it oppression, persecution, or weariness? There is a rest which Jesus gives, and it is the rest of redemption, rest of love, healing, and peace with God. There is also a rest which the believer experiences and it comes through commitment and consecration to Christ. See, you don't have to worry about being recognized. You don't have to jockey for position if you are committed to Christ. If you are committed to Christ, you don't have to worry. He will put you exactly where He wants you when you are yoked to Him. Someone said, like the yoke with two sides, one yoke has become light because Jesus has taken the heavy end on Himself. The burden has been shifted and we now no more feel the weight because it is easy and light. 
Well, friends, I hope you are all blessed with today's Bible study. In the study today, as Jesus shifted his attention to the crowd and cities after instructing his disciples, not all responses from the crowd were positive. There were people and cities that rejected his teachings. Thus, for those cities which did not accept Jesus' teachings, he rejected them. Let us remember that Jesus is the king. He has enunciated the ethic. He has presented his credentials by performing miracles. He has preached the gospel that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He has presented himself, but his people have rejected him. Their rejection has caused him to make a decision. He rejects them also. He is the king, and the king always has the last word. The Lord then turns his back upon the nation Israel, no longer presenting to them the kingdom. He is on his way to the cross, and his invitation is to the individual. He calls out, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Is it not amazing? Today we live in a world where we are overburdened by work, family, diseases, news of hunger and war. All these above the sins that easily entangles us. Jesus assures us rest by asking us to put our yokes on him. When he said, I will give you rest, it literally means I will rest you. Dear friends, don't you wish peace in your heart? Don't you finally wish to say, I've tried enough, yet I'm nowhere. I need God's offer to help. God can give you rest today. Let us end here today, dear friends. Continue to stay tuned in to Through the Bible. God bless you.